Right, this is a, a hexagon which has sort of, I've finished bef but got to the stage before I've put the surface crochet on. Um, and it's the centre, it's a bit lumpy there, look, the centre is made in the the pre-swapped yarn. But don't worry about that because, you know, the techniques are exactly the same. So I just wanted to show you, this is what, if you like, the naked... <laughs> <laughs> the naked finished hexagon looks like. Um, I'm not going to go over making a, a complete one of these, but what I did want to show you is how what happens when you get to the end of each round with this. Because again, Greta has created or showed us how to do um, a lovely sort of join for the end of each round, which creates a really neat um, and again, almost invisible uh, way of creating a nice even hexagon. So let me get on and show you that. Right, so I've got my centre that we've made and I've, I'm now working with the lovely, I'm going to just say it again, melange. I don't know if that's how you say it. Please feel free to correct me. Um, a couple of things I wanted to show you, um, as, apart from that lovely join at the end of each round, I just want to show you how I am attaching in my yarn and starting the hexagon off. I don't know if this is sort of strictly how the pattern's working it, but it's worked so well, I thought I'd just share it with you just in case. So you can choose to start in any of the stitches. And um, there's 12 stitches you can choose to start in any of them. Again, I'm using the smaller hook, but just simply because of my own tension being ridiculously loose. I'm, I've put my hook through any of the stitches and I'm just gonna pull a loop through of the new yarn. Now, to me, that's just not secure enough, and so I like to secure it with another chain. So now I'm happy that that uh, is secure. But equally, I like to start my work with a proper stitch, not just a chain. So I have been going back in where I've come out in that first stitch and making a double crochet. Okay, just pulling that yarn a little bit tighter. And that is how I am starting my round. It is lovely and secure, and the stitches look nice and neat in the round. So that is how I'm starting my first double crochet. I am attaching my yarn in that nice and secure way and then going straight back in and making an actual double crochet, okay? So our first round, um, in fact, in any round when you are working in the round like this, um, uh, uh, working flat, you're going to have to increase your stitch count as you work rounds or else the sides of the piece start to come up rather than sort of sit flat. And how we're going to increase the stitch count is by putting two stitches into one stitch from the round before at various points. As you work out the round of the rounds, you have um, kind of more single or more one-to-one -one stitch ratios than increases. I will show you what I mean as I go. It's difficult for me to explain because of my limited vocabulary. But, okay, let's crack on. So I've done my first double crochet here, and in my next stitch, I have to do two double crochets. So what that is doing is increasing my stitch count from two to three. Okay, so all the way around this uh, first round it is one two one two one two all right so one stitch in one then two stitches in one all the way around that's going to increase our stitch count from 12 to 18 okay so I'm on the last two stitches so one and then two and that has worked that means I've worked a full round and I'm just going to stop there and show you. Um, so we are now in a situation where we're ready to move on to our next round, but we've got to close this round somehow because you can see we've got this gap there. And this is the clever part. This is what I really liked about this particular pattern. And I think I'm going to sort of use this in other things going forward, this really clever join. Um, what you're going to do is take your hook out of the last stitch and the hook is actually going to come from the back to the front through the first double crochet stitch that you've made. So through this one here. Now what you'll find is because this yarn is sort of quite hairy, it might be difficult to get your hook through. And what I found helpful, here's a little tip, is if I actually hook at it using, using the hook itself, like so, just kind of hook it, um, I can kind of create the space to get my, to get my hook through. All right, so you can see it's coming from the back of the work through to the front. I'm then going to put the hook back through 
the loop of the last stitch. Okay, can you see I've picked that up? This is at a very unnatural angle. I'm doing this for the camera. You won't have nearly as much trouble as this because you'll be working in a more natural way, not trying to, not badly attempting to film it for people. So my hook has come through the back of the work under the first double crochet and it's gone through the loop of the last double crochet. And all I'm gonna do is pull that loop through. So you can see it has closed that gap um, really neatly um, just by looping the last stitch through the first just like so and we are now ready to move on to the next round now normally you would expect to do a a, a, a kind of a single um chain that's the word groping wildly um you would expect to do a single chain here but we are not going to in this case and again i double checked this with greta and it is absolutely intentional and creates a really, really neat finish on your hexagons. So what you're going to do is go straight back through that double crochet again, and here is where that sort of digging motion helps even more to dig through, because it is a bit tight. So you can see I've gone back under that last, uh, sorry, the first double crochet of the last round, and I'm just gonna make my first double crochet of the next round in here as well. Okay, so that's my first starting double crochet for this round. Now this time, rather than going one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around, we're going one, one, two, one, one, two. And you can see the pattern because in the next round, we're going to be going one, 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 two, one, 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 two. So each round, your increase comes one stitch later. And that increase always falls in the second stitch of the increase from the round before. So if you look here, you can see I've got two stitches, just about, coming out here, and my increase is gonna fall into this stitch here, and that's gonna stay the same as we work around. Your increase is always gonna fall into that second um, stitch from the increase of the round before. So I'm gonna just whiz round this, um, doing another increase, and just show you the closing one more time. Okay, just on the last, repeat the pattern here. So one, two, and then two in the last stitch. That is also a good pointer for you. Your last stitch will always be an increase. Okay, we'll always have two in that last stitch there. So again, here we are with that big gap, and we're gonna just repeat that closing one more time. So I'm gonna take my hook out, put it through the very first double crochet and it does get really tight but don't worry if you if you go at it with the hook you will get through just like so I'm going to put it through the loop from the last stitch should have cut my end off shouldn't I really never mind and just loop whoops loop it through I did manage to do it before the hook slipped out there you go Closed, joined, ready to go. And we start the next round by going straight back into that space or the place we've just come out of and making our first double crochet in there. And off we go. Okay, so that is how you're going to close each round and start the following round. Beautiful and neat um, method. And you're going to close the actual um, hexagon itself with that invisible join that I showed you um, when we work the center point. So um, that's really all you need to complete 18 hexagons. So I'll go off and do some more. You can go off and do yours and then we'll meet back and look at some surface crochet.